All right, Raul, we just passed the exam. How did you do? Well, I did, uh, you know, surprisingly good. I, I actually thought I didn't pass, but at the end I got the, the nice screen and, uh, you know, uh, got three above target, um, another one at target and one below target, but anyway. You're good to go, man. I mean, like, uh, I think a lot of the people that are really, really, you know, conscientious and focused, they're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to pass. I don't know if I'm going to pass. And they hit it and they're like, oh, I got three above targets. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. So everybody's got a PMP story. Kind of what's the basics? Like you, uh, you went through this pretty quickly. Uh, tell us like the basics of how you got here, if you don't mind. Yeah. So, so I think, uh, you know, I, you know, in my background, I have kind of done a lot of project management before, mm -hmm. um, you know, but sometimes, you know, they, they ask for the certification and that's kind of how I, you know, through a friend of yours, it's how I actually got your contact. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's how, how I started it. Right. And I, I certainly wanted a, a program that was kind of efficient and effective, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, I've had experiences with other standardized tests before and, you know, I really, really struggled through a couple of them, like, you know, you know, months and months and months studying and studying. And sometimes I had to take that exam twice, right? So I was, you know, this time around was, you know, how can I do this in such a way that I don't, you know, certainly don't need to take that exam several times. And, and another one that also kind of enriches my, you know, knowledge of what I actually had in project management. So, you know, that's kind of how I landed, you know, kind of trying to get it. That's awesome. And then like, talk me through kind of like the seven day accelerator. Cause you did that. And we, you were in the coaching calls and with the e-courses, like what was the seven day accelerator? Like, first of all, how long did it take you? And then what was it like? Okay. Yeah. So, so I think for me, the, the seven day was, was great because you can do it at your own pace. So, so in my case, I didn't, you know, even though seven days is really fast, I, I took my time. Right. So every day I probably got like one or two sessions mm -hmm. right? and then I practice, um, you know, questions. Right. But right. But I would say I probably spent two to three hours every day consistently, right? So I didn't went for like six or eight hours of power studying, right? I yeah. just, okay, let me two or three hours trying to internalize the concepts. And I think that's what the, the accelerator does, that it, it also builds that repetition. You know, like when you start day one, mm -hmm. you, what you see in day one, you will see it in day two. And what you see in day two, you see in day three. And then at the end, when you're in day four or five, you're already almost kind of building mm -hmm. this whole repetition, right? So it you know, the repetition in terms actually helps you internalize it without memorizing, right? You know, certainly there's things that you need to memorize like the formulas and stuff, but, but there's, there's ways you can actually do that. But like you said, it's really important not to memorize. And I think that that accelerator just took you through the key points, really what you really needed to kind of know to be able to be deadly at the PMP, right? You, know, you are not gonna know everything, yeah. but hey, if you kind of go at it, you probably can just really, 80-20 kind of rule. That's good. And so the coaching calls, like who was your focus coach and what was that coaching call like and the coaching calls you had on the Wednesdays? What were those like? Yeah, so, so I think my, my coaching was with Kate. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we met on Tuesdays. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, they were great because we, we actually went through questions. And I think that the, the, the size of the class was really small. There was only three of us. So it really yeah. took us you know, it was great because you had enough time to really go through several questions during the time that it was stipulated, right? So in that case, that, that, those coaching sessions were just questions and have everybody, you know, go through the methodology, how to respond questions and you practicing those. Mm -hmm. And then certainly it kind of helped um, kind of see what others were, you know, how were the rationale and the reasoning behind what they were thinking. Yep. So that actually kind of helped you a little bit go, oh, wow, I didn't really thought about that way of breaking down the question, right? Mm -hmm. So I think those were Tuesday's uh, coaching session. Then, you know, we had the Wednesday coaching sessions with you, um, which, which I think were very similar to the Tuesday's ones. Now, I think um, you actually probed a little more in terms of, of why were you thinking it this way and you were right. reinforcing the methodology, right? Hey, we want to, you know, read the question first, really. Mm -hmm. if, if you skip like a couple of answers, no, no, tell me why this one is not right or why right. you want to rule this one out, so. So I think they complimented both very well, both very well. Yeah, there's like on the my calls, there's more people. Like I just yes. we throw more in there, but it's I just have to facilitate the whole time, and we're really trying to like hone everybody to like stick to the same method. Then we allow them like the little calls to like a little bit of refining, little homeroom kind of aspect. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so so I think the 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 other nice thing about it, I think, was the um, you know certainly the diversity of the people. Right, there were people. Yeah. Um, 
you know, that have taken this PMP like a couple, two, three times, and then now they are like really super excited. Right? So you say, well, wow, you know, so, so certainly things are clicking. Yeah. Um, and, and it's kind of great to just see that as well. That's cool. And you said originally you are a practitioner. I mean, you are a practitioner. You're a project mm -hmm. manager. You run things. Yeah, yeah. You improve stuff. Um, did you learn anything through the class that you can apply back to regular job? Like what, what about that? Yeah, no, I think certainly there, there are things that I, I think, like you said, there's, you know, the flow that you teach, mm -hmm. right? I think uh, in real life, you go through similar flows, but sometimes you, well, you know, why should this do this first before this one, right? And then now some of those things click mm -hmm. um, more now that you go through those flows and those flows are really important to kind of be able to answer Mm -hmm. uh, the questions, right? So that uh, your lesson of seven flow, I kind of, before my test, I probably saw that one a couple times, right? Yeah. And I think that's one of the main things that going into uh, my regular job, I'll, I'll take with me, right? It's just very easy to, to, to internalize and then apply, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you don't need to have all the 44 or 45 processes kind of in your head. Yeah. Uh, you know, these are seven that, you know, will help you through, right? So I, I think I learned that. I think the other one, it's, and it's a caution for people is, Sometimes what happens in real life is not necessarily how PAP wants you to see things. True. Right. So, so you have to just be careful that um, it's kind of a standard, a guideline and, and mm -hmm. you know, your, your practical experience sometimes is not necessarily the best answer for the PNP, right. even though in practice you go and do it. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Yeah. That's good. I mean, um, as you went through it, I mean, a lot, I asked a lot of people like, what did you believe before you started studying that you now know is not true? Was there anything you kind of came into this cold, just knowing that like, Hey, I want to get a PMP, help the job, help the things move along. But was there any preconceived notions that you had or that you had read that once we got into it and we saw that what really worked that you said, Oh, that's not true or, or anything like that. But you mean not true about the PMP exam or, the, or getting the PMP certification? Yeah, or what other people maybe in the internet or whatever were saying about how to do it, anything that, that, that way? Yeah, no, I think, I think when I, I told a couple of my friends, hey, I'm going to go for it, they said, oh, man, you, you really, really have to study. It's, you know, you're going to kill yourself studying and mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be super, super tough. Um, so that's kind of what I really got out of it. You know, I, I'm not shy away of... of of tough things, but certainly, you know, this time around, I was looking for something effective and efficient, right? I just didn't want to go through mm -hmm. repetition mode, right? That's kind of just rework, right? So I yeah. didn't want to, <laughs> to, to go and go through four or five hours a couple of times or two or three times, right? I wanted to, uh, and that's what I liked about the program is how do I understand this in such a way that I can apply into the situation rather than just going in there and, and not doing very well, right? And whatever that takes, that's mm -hmm. what I would do, right? Um, but that was the main thing. I think it's just all that warning that, man, you, you really need to study a lot. Yeah, so and do, I, do you I, believe that? I mean, like do, you studied like a meager amount or a, a calculated amount, like you weren't overwhelming yourself, it doesn't sound like. Exactly, and that's, that's I think, for me, that was great. I, you know, I think I, you have to say like you have to be diligent and disciplined that's one thing mm -hmm. but that's different than just kind of spending seven or eight hours every day mm -hmm. and that's kind of where sometimes that you know studying you know wasted study goes is if, if you're not studying properly then you're really not using your time wisely right. right so so that's kind of i think very important for me is i didn't really kill myself but i was diligent every day i put yep. a couple of hours right and, yep. I, and i didn't miss a big beat so you know, Monday through Sunday, you know, every, you know, five or six days, I was putting a couple, two to three hours a day, mm -hmm. right? You know, I've heard stories of people putting six or seven hours every day, you yeah. know, they go to bed and they, they read the pin box <laughs> all the time. And I was like, wow, you know, if I need to do this, that's kind of harder. Than, <laughs> than Did you case. ever read the pin box? No, I didn't. I didn't even even buy it. So you know, I was scared because I didn't even buy it. So I said, I said, I talked to my coach and said, hey, you know, I, I really don't have the pin book. I, I have some experience, but I didn't get it, you know, so I hope I can actually do it without it. That's good. I mean, that, I love it. The fact that like, you didn't even buy it. You didn't even look <laughs> at it. Uh, don't worry. I have, I've read it uh, yeah. a couple, couple hundred times. So we're good. Uh, that's great. Now, you know, there's probably people out there that are just like you. Practitioners, great at project management. I mean, the way you're talking about it, the way we're talking here, I'm super excited for what's next and like going into Lean Six Sigma and stuff and being able to talk through that stuff with you because you know a lot of things and you're good at what you do. Um, but like, there's probably people out there that are just like you. 
And they're probably saying like, oh God, it's so much studying. I, got, I don't want to do it. It's probably below me. Like it's, it's just something that, you know, it's a check in the box. Um, knowing that you got through it, you're smiling and you were able to do it efficiently. Like what would you say to those people who are on the fence or that need to get it and they just don't know how to get it? How would you counsel those people? Well, I think um, how I counsel it, I think you, you've, you have developed a, 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 an intuitive methodology, right? Okay. And, and it's one that will take you through um, the flow of, of project management in a way that you can actually easily understand. So that's one thing. I think the other one, the classes are broken down in a very logical way, right? So it's not, you're not you're not forced to really memorize everything. It's, you're being much more forced to understand, right? And, and the thing with a, with a PMP is that it's more situational than anything else. So if you're not able to um, put those things together, then certainly it's not gonna help you at the end, right? And it's not also gonna help you at your, for your career and project management as a whole, right? So I think your program, it's, it's effective, it's efficient, and it actually breaks it down in such a way that, um, you know, you probably have a higher chance of, of passing the first time. I think that's kind of the key, you know, just because of the way how it is actually structured. You that's know, awesome. I, I've taken some other, you know, some other tests and it's almost like a, a, an overload of information or an overload of practicing, an overload of testing. And, and you know, this one was more like, you know, it's, it was actually fun too. You know, I really enjoyed some of those classes. I wanted to go to the classes. So when, when things are fun, uh, you certainly have a little more inspiration to go and do it, right? So I think that would be my third key point is if you're going to have a lot of fun and that will make things a little bit easier too. That is awesome, man. Um, well, that is really, really good. Uh, I am so glad. Bring it over here, buddy. Bring it over here. <laughs> I, got, I don't know if you can hear it. I got, I got to open a pair. Of, uh, <laughs> here you, go. you want to say hello? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to say hello. <laughs> Sorry, I had to open some gummy snacks or something like that. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so it's good. Uh, well, you did so amazing. Like we had talked about you coming on as a coach. So we'll after after this, we'll see if it works. Because I mean, the thing that resonated with me, and one of the things that's like super helpful from the teacher and instructor side is that while we're going through these coaching calls, I get to see your brain work. And not only when you're answering questions, but how you're reacting to when other people answer, answer it. Because, you know, some of those later calls, you know, I'd, I'd see you, you know, nodding or doing stuff. And I'd, I'd ask like, what do you think about said person's answer? And then you would have to go in a, you know, in a polite, sympathetic way, explain to them your logic. And it's, mm -hmm. I think like, for me, it's so, I know like at that point, ooh, he's ready. But uh, I mean, did you think that that being able to explain it to other people, is that part of the learning process? Was that helpful for you in a sense? Yeah, no, I think absolutely. I think um, it helps you. It, it helps you with your train of thought, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not one thing is kind of if you're silently just doing it, mm -hmm. it's not the same as you're actually verbalizing. I think when you verbalize things, um, you, you actually internalize it even more. Yeah. Right. So that's, I think, you know, it's, it's key in business, you know, you, you try to, when you put things to word and when you write stuff, you know, you, you internalize more than just kind of silently just, okay, you know, internalizing, which you think and you sometimes fool yourself and you say, well, did I actually got it, right? But then when you're able to explain it, then you're pushing yourself to really, you know, not know about it, right? So it's almost like teaching a class, right? If you don't prepare yourself about teaching the class, mm -hmm similar thing with a question you know you're, you're just pretty much kind of training your mind to think of the same way but just being able to communicate it which is sense. more challenging right but yeah. at the same time it helps you uh when it's exam day to just train your mind on how to decode these things and that really helped me a lot because i'll, I'll tell you the first 20 questions i thought you know i was like man you know a, a, a train just kind of ran over me <laughs> yeah yeah. But I mean, that's the thing that we always, cause it ran over me too. Like we talked about, like in the course yeah. and other things, like be prepared regardless how well you prepare and do these things, be ready for getting slapped by 20 questions or so. And just being like, Oh, and having your, your, uh, your confidence, like Joo, drop down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how did you react? You had 20 right off the bat, hard ones, boom, hit you just luck of the draw. How did you react? Yeah. So, so I, you know, I'll be honest, I, you know, those first 20 questions, I started getting nervous, right? So I was like, 
you know, this is so, so I started, you know, breathing a little bit slower. That was the first thing because okay. my breath was going faster. Yeah. So I started kind of uh, slowing down a little bit, my breathing, um, calming down. And then I think, you know, I just went through my mind and said, I have to stick to the process. Yes. Right? And, and that's what I said to myself. Even if I can rule one out, that's even better than having all of the four in the deck, right? Because some of these questions were, I couldn't even rule out one with confidence. I was like, all of them can be an answer. <laughs> Stop. So I said, yeah. So, so I said, well, let me make sure I can rule one, one out and let me do diligently go through the process, right? So I started kind of relaxing a little bit and going through the process that we went through, right? You know, and, and just not deviating from it and just trusting it, right? Because I didn't know if I was <laughs> having some questions or not. Yeah. But said, this is what I practice. This is what I know. Let me follow it. And that's all I'm the best I can do. That's very true. And it's a little bit like when you take, when you do the live coaching calls, you get the answer. Like you get a feedback quick. Yeah. And we want to do that for a reason so we can yeah. learn and do that stuff. But it's, it's not on the exam. Those 20, you might have got them right. You don't yeah. know. I mean, you could have got them right, but they don't tell you, unfortunately. And so that's the thing is like, can we control ourselves enough? And there's like a, a mental game of this as much as it is uh, a technical kind of perspective. So. You did a yeah, good job. That's good. Yeah, I think like, and I think you, you, you have some, some a video on your, on your class about resilience, right? And mm -hmm. I think you talk about project management being resilient, the same thing with people. You, you know, it's a four hour test. Mm -hmm. I was brain dead by the end of it. Yeah. Um, but you have to kind of really, you know, when that's one of the tip of the, of the people that went with me, I said, you really have to just weather it out and, and just stick to the process. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be nervous, but you have to just trust the process and just just go and rule a couple and that's better than than just having all four there and then now you're on a 50 50 situation right and that that will put you at ease yeah um, so so i think that that kind of is the way i kind of dealt with it and i you know i think it it worked that's good yeah and it's it's like uh i mean <clears throat> you're playing a probability game with a lot of these like if you can get down to 50 50 it's much better and if we over time if we get those then we win the game because we only got to get a 61 ish and uh, I do think, like, as I think more, I'm forced to think more and more and more about this, and it's less about the questions, and it's more about how we approach and different stuff, just from my perspective. But, like, a lot of people, not you, but just a lot of people on the outside take a very negative approach to say, oh, the PMP is nothing like, it's not exactly like normal life, so therefore, it's, there's no value in it. Um, some people do that. I deal with customers all the time. And the way I kind of see it now, I don't know if this resonates even at all with you, but... Um, like, like when we go in, like you and me could take a situation on in a project and we would, we could take drastically different approaches. We could take, we might be trying our best to get there and there is no like perfect A answer or B answer like in life. And based on your experience, you can get there or not get there and you can learn from it. So, you know, my kind of like just, I don't know, the way I think about PMP questions is, yeah, humans wrote them. They're not perfect. And that's just their perspective right now. And we're going to try to do our best to follow their logic, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's invalid necessarily. It's just, you know, one man's perspective to a standard. It, yeah. It, yeah. I think, I, I think you're right on, I, I think one thing that you asked me was, okay, has it helped me? I think the other, the other thing that has helped me a little bit, I, I can tell people about it is uh, if you use it or you don't use it, it, it depends. Right. But, you know, I have some people call me with, you know, business problems and we chat and all this. Yep. But, when you start seeing the problem, you start saying, well, you know, I saw this in the PMP, maybe, maybe did you actually try doing some of this? So, yeah. So I, so I was doing something, you know, and, 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 you know, somebody was talking to me about a, a, a subcontractor and the subcontractor not doing very well and, yeah. and people spending, you know, 24 hours just, you know, so I kind of went in and say, well, did you actually went over with somebody kind of having a quality plan, for example, right? You know, yeah. it's, what are the no go go criteria? Did you put it in paper and then oh no I didn't do that <laughs> well <laughs> so those are the kind of things sometimes you're not following the you know yeah. then you can now ask that's very intuitive questions around okay did you think about doing this without telling the answer right so I, I find myself now with a little bit you know more understanding of the whole PMP yeah it's you know I think I have a better way of asking other type of questions and see, you know, hey, you know, have you tried this or have you looked into doing this? 
and then sometimes you, you have a good you know light bulb on the other end i like that and i really like that as you're gonna be a great coach dude uh and so uh <laughs> uh and s- so you're, you're Socratically, like the Socratic method, you're asking questions instead of saying, you need to do a quality plan. You need to write this down. You're exactly. forcing understanding through questioning. And that's, I mean, I, in all these questions, I never gave you. Okay. <laughs> See, that one made through the mic. <laughs> uh, and so, um, I never gave you the answer. It was always like what you did. And I love what you're doing with like asking these questions. And I think the, the cool thing is that you brought it back to like with project management artists, if you will, like people that are sophisticated mm-hmm. and good at this stuff or trying, like sometimes we do go away from foundational things. And sometimes yeah. it's the right decision to make. You don't need to wear the training wheels. But sometimes when there are issues, it may be related to the fact that some of these standards weren't were kept. You don't need to put them all in, maybe. But some of them, like, hey, let's go back and let's think this and help us guide through the situation. So, I like the way you talked about that. I think it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that was great. Well, that's awesome. Well, apparently, I have things to deal with. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so let me go do that, Raul. I really, really appreciate the perspective that you've put forth here, and. Uh, you did amazing. Yeah, uh, didn't well, take well, that. Do you, you know how long? I could look at the records. How long did it take you? I can't remember. Uh, you know, I would say, you know, from the time I started the PMP, yeah. uh, like your training, yeah. it, I, I think it took me almost exactly uh, like a month from the time I started. Yeah. So, you know, 30 days, just, you know. That's not bad. And you, you did it on your own. You still were working, doing stuff like, you know, at the, at the time, right? Like, you're, yeah. you're busy. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. Any past? yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, just just be di- disciplined and diligent. You know, just fo- you know follow the process. You know, that's one thing. You know, kind of really important advice for somebody is you know just follow the classes. You know, day by day, just mm-hmm. do what it. You know, follow the checklist and and do that. And you know, uh, you're gonna have a higher chance of, of of beating it. That's all we can do. All right, Raul. I really really appreciate it, man. So great job. And uh, no thank you. you. I appreciate yes, it. Sounds thank good. You. Cool.